Hey guys, this is Jerry with at Theatrically Jerry, my YouTube channel, where I like to review uh, stage lighting and equipment and DJ lighting and equipment. Um, I have with me right here the Enigma M4 by Blizzard Lighting. It's their uh, flagship lighting console. Um, this is part two of the review, so if you've missed it, there's a part one where I go over the back of the console and all of the uh, inputs and outputs as well as the power supply. So that's on video one. This is video two. Video two, I want to just show you what the board looks like. Um, I'm going to show you what the splash screen looks like, the loading screen, when you turn the console on, on this 7-inch uh, TFT LCD display. Um, and we're going to kind of see the color scheme of the lights for the keys um, and all of that. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Power switch, like I said, and video review one is in the back. So I'm going to turn that on. And this is going to go ahead and load. It does take like 20 seconds to load. Um, maybe a little longer, but anyways, this is the lighting console. When this does load, it's going to load all the SC. So, your LED lights for all your keys and your faders light up after this has loaded. Um, when this does load, the screen turns black and you, you really can't do anything with it. I'm not sure why, so I always just hit clear. And when the screen turns white like it is now, that means you're good to go. But anyways, we're not going to talk about that. Um, so yeah, here is the Enigma M4 lighting console. This has the capability of doing four universes through ArtNet or two universes through DMX 512 and that's a five pin. There's two on the back. Um, we have 15 playback faders here. They call these playback faders. Um, I'm used to submasters and uh, being able to control individual channels, which you can do with this. You just have to kind of pack around it, basically, because these are made for playback busking, if you will, so on the fly lighting, um, but you can get these to run as uh, playback faders. You can also run your cues off of these, and you can also um, do what I do, and you can use it as a submaster, or you can just assign one channel attribute to this and control one channel of one fixture so it's pretty versatile that way um, like I did say you can actually um, run cues off of this so if you're going to use it for a theater like I plan to you can use cues um, write them to your playback faders and then you can actually use these buttons underneath it as your go button. So when you hit that channel, or uh, playback fader one, when you hit this, each hit will advance to the next cue for that particular fader. Um, this is your master fader, obviously. So it's nice to see that. You have a blackout button over here, which you can actually assign as a literal blackout button or you can go into the settings and you can assign your blackout as a bump button so every time you hit it the light that you have assigned or the light that's on is going to turn on and as soon as you release the key it's going to turn right off so that's another feature of this board that I think is pretty cool um, we have uh, your pages over here there's an up and down key to 
cycle through your pages. In a minute, I'm going to take this phone off the tripod and give you a better view of the board, but just for right now, it's easier for me to just leave it in this view for you guys. So I'm leaving it there for right now. Um, we have four wheels right here, and they are buttery smooth. So I like that. These wheels, these particular three wheels, you actually use to assign values to your channels and your attributes. So you actually have the ability to do three attributes at one time for your fixtures. And these three wheels correspond to the three locations on the screen down here. So um, I'm sure a lot of you have already used these and have seen these. These are not new but they are very convenient, especially when you're using uh, moving head fixtures. So I like that. Um, I saved this one last because this one is not only a rotary, so you can turn it, but you can also press it down and it's also an enter button. So you can use this to navigate your settings on screen and also use it as an enter button so i thought that was kind of cool for your your fourth one um these rotary dials are very nice and that's rotary a rotary b rotary c rotary d so there's a b c d anyways um moving on from that we have our select up here as well as another page button with an up and down arrow next to it and these are just really simple red LED uh, basically looks like a DMX screen um, I'll show you in a second that lights up red and it tells you what page you're on and you can actually um, assign 20 pages here and there's also 20 keys so each page you can do 20 keys on that's pretty uh, generous for a board I, I, I think so um, these keys up here are your select keys and you can hit them and assign them to these buttons as well as these pages I like to use personally there's a fixed key right here and I like to uh, do a look on stage that I like and I'll hit this fix button and I'll assign it to one. And when I want to bring that look up, I just hit fixed one and it brings that look up on the stage. So that's good. I like that. You also have your macro, your effects, preset, fixtures, and of course your groups because you can group fixtures on this board. Okay, so as promised, I'm taking you guys we are off the tripod and we are in shaky hand mode. That's what I call this because even though I have steady hands, they're never steady when I'm recording videos. I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, anyways, shaky hand mode. We are going to go ahead and look at, um, have a better look at your keys on this Enigma M4. Um, here's your new, your numerical keypad. So this is pretty standard for a lighting console. And it's probably one of the most important uh, areas on your board because you do do a lot of your programming on here. So this is set out uh, really nice. Um, one thing I thought was weird is usually boards have an at and a full button but the Enigma does not. Um, to do an at full for a specific fixture, you have to hit at, and then full will be when you hit the at button again. So uh, that's 
a little bit of a learning curve. Not sure why they did it that way, but that is how they decided to build their board, so you can't really question that. Um, you have your inner key, up, down, left, right keys, plus, minus. You have your through, which is pretty standard. Like if you want to do fixtures, nine through, five, minus, fixture, seven, you could do that. I did that backwards, but you can do five through nine, minus, seven, enter. Select your fixtures that way. You have a clear button, your backspace button. Um, this backspace button you're going to use a lot because there's not a physical keyboard and you cannot hook up a physical keyboard to this console. So you're going to be using a digital keyboard on the touch screen a lot. And you can hit this to delete characters. So I like that. Up above this, you have a move, delete, copy, and off button. I'll get into more of what that does later. It's not important right now. Um, here's your rotary uh, dials. They look pretty good. They have this really neat uh, blue underglow to them, so it makes them stand out, especially if you're working in the dark. You can actually see what you're doing. Um, they look great. And there's so many different words for these, so I just use a rotary dial because it reminds me of a phone. And uh, that is what it looks like to me. So you can call them encoders. Too. I've heard them rotary encoders, rotary dials, dials, uh, whatever. Whatever you want to call it that helps you remember what it does, I'm all for. Um, at the end of the day it's getting what you need done done so I like that anyways we come back over here here's your master again your blackout these are your page buttons and this page button controls all of these faders so this entire bank right here minus the keypad this controls that and you can do, I believe, 40 pages. Yes, 40. You can do 40 pages of playback uh, faders. That's crazy um, to me. I thought that was a uh, kind of neat addition, especially to a console that is at this price range. It's actually quite capable of doing a lot of things. Um, I'm hoping. They will release an update on their software, which they do um, regularly, well, occasionally anyways, but I'm hoping they will release a update that will allow you to see which queue you are in, because right now the Enigma M4 does not display anywhere on the screen what queue you're in, which blows my mind because that's like one of the most important pieces of information when you're using a lighting console is to know what you're in and like are you on Q1 are you on Q20 you don't know on here so when you assign cues you can actually assign them Q1 2 3 that you do know but when you're playing back your cues live you're gonna have no clue what queue are you uh, you're on because when you hit these buttons these are your cue buttons your go button, when you hit it, it just proceeds to the next queue, but you have no clue uh, what queue you're on. And I have um, written Blizzard Lighting kind of explaining to them uh, that problem and also was just curious if there was a setting on here that would display it, which right now there is not. So hopefully a future firmware update, which you can do. Um, speaking of that, with this handy dandy USB port, there is only one USB port on this console, and it's on the left of your touch screen. Um, you can plug in your USB thumb drive to update the board or install a show 
that you have written on a separate Enigma M4. Um, you can also do fixture updates. Blizzard releases fixture updates and you can plug this in and it will update your fixtures um, when you're patching. So that's kind of cool. Anyways, that's the left side of the board. The right side of the board has more banks. Um, but I'm going to get sidetracked because I like uh, minute details and stuff. And I would like to point out that there is, a, in fact, a Blizzard logo. And it does, in fact, light up blue. So you'll know that Blizzard uh, made this board. I thought that was kind of cool. I like that. That little touch on there. Um, right below the logo is a even and odd button and a find button. Below that in your attribute bank there is a dimmer switch and by the way I have this set so the keys are green until you press them and when you press them I have them so they turn red and there are options to do different colors so I, I just prefer the green and the red and the blue it looks clean nice layout anyways back to your attributes we have a tilt and pan color color mix gobo one gobo two a beam an effect button a control button and your ever so handy dandy locate button so you can locate a fixture on the fly if you need to fix it in a preset or in one of your cues you can do that um here's your function buttons you have your keyboard button this button's going to be pressed probably more than any other button in this bank, at least. Um, you have to actually physically hit the keyboard to get the keyboard to pop up. I thought that was kind of weird, and I do feel like they can also fix that in a firmware, where when you do need to enter an attribute value or rename something, you should be able to just press where you're going to type it, and the keyboard should just pop up. I think it's weird that you have to press a key. But anyways, you got your backup button. When you hit that, it backs up to your show. You can sh save your show. Um, that'll be for another video. But anyways, you're going to hit that, and it will back up your show. This setup button is actually what you do need to press to name your backup. Um, this setup is basically like the main menu of your console, so you're going to be using this a lot. Um, here's your save to queue. If you want to save queues, you can edit your playbacks right there. You can edit your presets right here. And you're going to hit this button a lot. It's your patch button, so you can patch your fixtures into this board, which is actually relatively easy to do. Um, patching anyways um, we have this store button and whenever it's hit it will store whatever you're doing so this is like a on-the-fly emergency save button so you hit this a lot when you're programming so you don't lose any of your information because it's painful when you lose a bunch of cues that you've set or patched fixtures because you forgot to hit the store button and you shut your board down. When you shut this console down, it does not save. So hit that save button a lot. I haven't, um, I'm pretty used to always hitting the save button or the store button. Even if I don't need to, I hit it because there's no harm in hitting it. So I hit it often. Um, it's just wired into my memory to hit the store button. All right, now we're gonna come back here to our faders because people are always interested in how they move. And these have no resistance to them. Um, they are also not mechanical. Obviously, you're not gonna get mechanical faders on a console at this price point, but um, it doesn't matter really because that's just a preference whether you like your faders to move up to where they were last positioned, but it doesn't bother me at all. So 
I'm okay with that. Um, there's no playback to these. It's literally like you're pressing air up and down. They slide effortlessly. Um, there's no give. And it doesn't take really anything to slide these up and down. There's no resistance on them. So you're not going to get like a resistance feedback on them. It's just effortless uh, sliding up and down. So that's cool. Um, I also like that they... Uh, actually included um, in these slots a little piece of fabric so food and dust doesn't get down into your faders which that's pretty uh, standard for a console but I like that um, they do not have them obviously for any of the keys you can actually see straight down into the, electri the electrical board, electronics, you can actually see the uh, motherboard, or the main board, it says R something under the, I can't really see it, under the 5, here we go, it says RK, actually it's a K, K99, and there's K100 under 6, I thought that was kind of weird that you can actually see uh, the motherboard on this, but uh, it's probably like that with a lot of consoles. I just personally noticed it on this because these keys are actually pretty bright, which I love. Um, the LEDs for these keys are extremely bright, so you're not going to mistake a key. You can see the key in pitch dark which I will now demonstrate by turning this light off and we'll see what this looks like in pitch dark. Well, not pitch dark, but tech booth dark where you have your blue light shining in your tech booth and it's dark in there. You're gonna be able to see this very well. And I love how the green contrasts with the blue in the screen. Um, is very bright as well. Um, this screen is a 7 inch TFT LCD screen. This is where you're going to do most of your work on if you want to do it quickly because this is a touch screen. Um, I thought that was a great ad for this. The touch screen on this is very uh, quick. The input there's no lag or when you touch it it's not going to go oops did you touch it or did you not it's gonna actually go to whatever you're, you're touching so you don't have to worry about stuttering or weird anomalies like that with this touch screen it's actually very responsive I guess is what I'm trying to say um, so anyways, this is your main page. This is the page you're always going to see. It's, uh, this page is actually, um, user assignable. So you can actually assign, uh, different views on this main screen. Like right now I got my fixtures right here and then down here, my groups and over here, are my presets but if you hit the top of the menu where it says preset and then you come over here and you hit one of these at the same time it will show that on here so you can actually lay out this main screen however you want to do it I thought that was kind of cool I'm not gonna go into all the settings on this because that'll be a 50,000 minute video and uh, if I do decide to go in that and you guys want to see that, I will do it, but it's going to be several uh, separate videos explaining each of the most important functions on this board. Mostly uh, your setup button and you can, I might show you guys what the patch screen looks like and how you patch um, your fixtures into this console. Just the more important buttons, but anyways. That is a overview of the top of this.
console and the buttons and the faders and the screen and everything else I covered. This is video two for the Enigma M4. Um, there will be a third and final video where I go over the quality of the board, um, some more of its features, and I'm also going to go over what is included accessory-wise with this console because Blizzard does include a couple of accessories um, with this console, and I'll go over those as well. So quality control, the quality, the feel of the board, and also the accessories that they include with the Enigma M4. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video um, and me rambling on about technology, because I can ramble for hours, uh, hit the like button and of course the subscribe button because I love people who love what I love. So hit the subscribe button, the like button, share my videos. I mean, I don't care what you do with the video after I upload it, just don't do anything weird. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, anyways, I appreciate you guys watching and thank you for coming to Theatrically Jerry's channel. I'm Jerry and I look forward to making more review videos for you guys. So with that being said, we will go on to making video three of the Enigma M4.